So, last time we freed Lanky Kong. Yes. And now we're back to a, another jet barrel. So yeah, there's there's a, a jet barrel barrel out in the like the first zone of the place, and pretty much it only just lets you get up here where we can find Diddy's red print. By the way, um, I would just like to say I hate the phrase jet barrel barrel. Yep. Well, it, it, it's it's also sometimes called rocket barrel barrel. Jet barrel and rocket barrel seem to be interchangeable terms mm. they've used. But you could uh, just call it a jetpack. Yeah. Be a jetpack barrel. Uh, but yeah, there's there's a couple more jetpack places to get to. There's this switch that was on top of this temple that I couldn't do anything with. Which... Jesus! This guy says feed me! This this totem pole thing demands to be fed! Yeah, this Aztec totem pole. Yes! This Aztec totem pole in the desert. These are all things that make sense. Oh, I'm so glad it doesn't make the sun ornament turn. <laughs> anyway, you shoot things into its mouth and it eats them. It likes peanuts. And it, it goes the uh, munch munch belch. And you gotta time it and get it in while it turns. And each time he eats one, he goes a little bit faster. And so you gotta change up the timing a little bit more. It's and he's mostly gotta... just standing still and pressing the fire button, isn't it? Yep. And you gotta do it like four or five times. And then it makes buttons Jesus. appear above all these stores. So, you needed to use the jet barrel to get on top of the temple to hit the switch, to start up the totem pole, to feed the totem pole, to make the switches appear, to hit the switches to open the doors to the temple. This makes me want to buy a gun. <laughs> well, it's a good thing that we're doing that right now. Here is Lanky's grape shooter. It's literally just a pea gun. It's a pea shooter. But with grapes. Oh, and, and let's, like, let's also tiny pick up some yeah, coins somewhere too. She gets a crossbow. She shoots because she's feathers. a woman in a video game, she has to have a bow. She doesn't shoot fruits, she shoots feathers. By the way, here, that little ledge was blocking the coconuts. <laughs> oh, Jesus. This, this is a well-programmed game. <laughs> so you hit the switch and you go in the temple. And each Kong has their own door. With their own switch for the temple, with their own section of the temple. That doesn't with more switches in it. I mean, I guess I shouldn't complain about the non-dimensionality of this, but so you have the, the thing, and there's there's paths in the temple. Yes. Oh That's no, the have we got a maze. Yeah, and there's look at those guys. It's kaboom. You remember kaboom? Right. I was gonna pull out my gun to shoot them, but then they just exploded themselves because they do that. This, uh, this was the inspiration for Creepers in Minecraft. <laughs> so, this, this temple is not really, like, a maze. Okay. It's, there's a split path and one of them dead ends pretty quickly. And then there's another split path and one of them dead ends pretty quickly. <laughs> so, uh, as I said, those, the, the purple clap traps you kill with, uh, grenades, with oranges. And then they give you oranges. Yeah. Of course, hitting them with oranges is a little bit tricky. As you can see here. Fortunately, like, the oranges kind of sort of home in a little bit. Like, if you pay attention when you throw an orange, you can see, like, it sort of curves a little as it's bouncing. To get towards the enemy. Uh, these guys you can just shoot with your gun to explode them early. Or just run into them because they give you watermelons yeah. anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So it's almost like it's a nut. It's nut almost nut. like they're kind of pointless. Yeah. It's almost like most of the obstacles in this game are kind of pointless. By the way, you can hurt yourself with your oranges. I want <laughs> to <sighs> not. Um. But here, we've there's a golden banana at the end of this one path. And a bunch of film canisters that, that I still can't pick up. Yeah. Anyway, let's get out. What? The, the, the temple demanded get out. And now we've got a timer and a crosshairs. Why? So, uh, because I guess there's just a croc in this temple. You remember croc? 
the, the, oh, the off-screen sniper guy. guy. Yeah. Hey, hey, let's let Diddy go in the temple. Cause Diddy's got his oh, own room in the temple. Open sideways. Sometimes doors open in different directions. This is the same exact layout, isn't it? Just about. They're ever so slightly different, but they're basically the same thing well, for see, all of the right guys. And, oh, oh, this one has stairs up there. Yep. Uh, and that's this one. The path on the right was the way to uh, advance forward. So the path so on the different. left is going to dead end with something over there. And here, he's only got critters to deal with. Diddy can just kill whatever shit was in his temple. There's a coin here. It's because he's less good at combat. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm... I... I... Yeah, the, the decisions that they made in this game are very arbitrary all the time. And bad. Most, most of the them, time, yeah. bad. Many of the decisions are just bad. These guys you can't kill with the, the gun. You can only kill them with grenades. Because they've got protective barrels. Protective barrels that aren't explosive. So, you know, you, you can't just detonate them by poking them. One grenade can kill several of them at once, though. Because explosion radius. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> These balloons is uh, sometimes a little awkward. Anyway, that's what it looks like when an enemy respawns. Why are there enemies respawn? Because why not? It's unnecessary. Exactly! The whole grenade thing is unnecessary. Yeah! Anyway, Diddy's got a banana here, and Diddy's got almost all of his bananas here. And he has to get out, too. Okay. So, if you didn't get, like, that banana balloon before you're forced to get out... So, I think, I'm pretty sure if you leave and come back in, then you don't have the timer. Also, I happen to know, I never actually, like, stopped and did this, but I know from memories of past time playing this game, if you just sit there and let the timer run out, you take one damage. Oh. He shoots you for one damage. Once. It's not like, I expected it, I, I remember, like, when I was a kid and that happened, I expected it to be an instant kill, and I was like, I want to see this happen. And then it was just one damage. Opla. Opla. Also, I'd just like to point out that um, your gun ammo is uh, carries over between Kongs, so when you fire a coconut, you have fewer peanuts and grapes and such. So you're not even collecting unique collectibles. Yep. Yeah, this uh, this one jukes and weaves. What determines the way the balloon... Moves. They have... Every balloon follows a pack. Right. I understand that. But why do they move the way they do? Because Rare decided to do that. For each balloon, somebody made the decision for how the path of it goes and at what speed it goes at in each part of the path. Somebody programmed that in manually. So how does Lanky's movement compare to the other Kongs? Ah, uh, about the same, about average. Oh. Also, I, I, I thought there would be like differences in speed and jumps ability. Uh, and... Like, okay, Lanky's... Are they, are they not that interesting? <laughs> like, Lanky can jump a little bit better because like his, um, his jump attack where he waves his arms um. around the, that, like, keeps him in the air a little bit longer, so he can do a little bit of, uh, like, carry with that. It looks like he has a little bit of... Welcome to bonus yeah, like, he's a little that, bit fluttery. The hell uh, is Big this? Bug Bash! This is, uh, a bonus game! In that, that bonus game barrel! Swap the flies! flies. <laughs> the second thought, they're gonna make use the Z button. Nope. It's a swap fly, and, um, this is basically luck! Because the ways that the, the flies move very randomly, very, like, twitchy, and the time it takes to swing the fly swatter, you cannot 
intentionally lead the flies and hit them with the slaughter. You've just got to mash and hope that they'll be in the, gen the general area. This is a bad mini game. One of many. I mean... I'm not surprised it's a bad mini game inside of a bad game. But I managed to mash my way through, so hey. Surprise, golden oh, banana. banana. Blanky does a wavy Get arm dance when he picks up a banana. Get out of here. Uh, I think Lanky moves slightly faster when doing the orangutan versus normal walking. I think. Uh, but if he falls down like a single step, then he'll stop doing it. And then you'll just be holding Z, which is crouch. Anyway, we get out of there, and let's have Tiny. There's, that's what Tiny's feather bow looks like. She shoots out a feather. It sticks in things. So, uh, I went in here, and uh, I wound up not actually, like, doing the full temple area for Tiny yet, because, um... You, you may have already heard very briefly the, the giggling of a fairy in this area. And I think you you know, I'm not 100% certain that, yeah, you, you just, there. You can hear the fairy is, uh, is behind that wall. I wasn't 100% certain that you can easily come back after the timer thing starts and do things. So I figured I'd just leave, get the thing that I need to interact with fairies and... I'd come back for that later. I'd have to come back to get the fairy anyway, so I may as well save the rest of that temple room for then. Um, anyway, I at some point opened up the, the door here. I don't even remember when. I think it was one of the switches on top of the uh, thing. Anyway, this this, this, this is the invincibility move, and you can cancel it by holding Z and pressing C left. So that's 14 or 15? Somewhere around there, I lost count. Yeah, I'll I'll track the counts again. Anyway, here we've got. This is just walk across Basically, it's to walk across pain floor. As there's a couple of banana sponges in there, and there was a red balloon in there as well. Welcome to bonus. And here's game. another bonus game: stealthy snoop. Sneak around the maze to the checkered flag! What checkered flag? So, uh, this is extremely dark, this area. Yeah? Those are cops. With a K, of course. Uh. They have flashlights. And if they catch you, then you have to start the minigame over. Uh. Welcome so to this bonus is a stealth game. mission maze. Because everybody loves stealth minigames. Absolutely. Especially when you can see things this well. I mean, you, you can absolutely see what's happening on the screen right now, can't you? Are those spike pits? No. So, the maze, it's a little bit, it was a little bit easier to see on the actual TV screen when I was playing it. The recording seems to be a bit darker than, uh, than oh, my gameplay. But, uh, yeah, this, uh, it's like a, an enclosed maze area. It has walls, so you can't, like, fall out. I can't even see them. Yeah, you can't. Well done! Anyway, that's the checkered flag that you could totally see. I... Yeah, I, I might have to kick the brightness up on this after I put the, the, the post commentary into the trap there. That's the fourth uh, golden banana, DK. And then it makes the number five banana port pad appear. I hate that collecting the primary collectible makes things happen. Yeah! So that's... Just like... That, that, that's just something just as a thought to compare this to like Banjo-Kazooie. Uh, I stopped in here just so I could switch to Tiny to grab this stuff. Because there's a, a tag barrel inside the trough and scoff area. Uh, and then I realized... You know what? I should just do the, the the boss here and get out and then grab stuff and get the last Kong. And then, because I'm going to have to come back to this world with the last Kong to, to finish unlocking shit. And, you know, there's the, I need to do the thing for the fairies. So let's just do this. And there's everything in one world, too. Yep. Well, not one, two. That would imply that there's two sub-levels. You know what? Yes. Um... What the hell was I saying? Right, comparing this to Banjo-Kazooie. 
things in Banjo Kazooie kind of made sense. When you did something, it the the thing that it caused to happen made sense. Generally. Okay. In this game, like, there's no connection between shit. You play an instrument and a door opens. You open a lock and Clumsy's dance makes a rock explode. You you grab a golden banana and a switch appears, a pad appears. Shit just happens. By the way, uh, this this boss is for Diddy Kong, and uh, that means if you're not Diddy Kong, you're not allowed. Only Diddy is allowed in that door to fight the boss. So I'll take it each Kong has their own boss. Uh, I I I know that they're the. Each one does have at least one boss. I don't think there's exactly five worlds. I don't remember. We'll see. Well, I mean, there could be six, and then you have to find it. But, um... I don't know. Anyway, there's the boss of this world. It's a teen. It's a wasp. It's it's a little dragonfly. Oh. I squished it! We win! Fight over! That's it! Oh no! That wasn't the real fight. There's a big one now. I get it, because it's a dragon. Yep. So, uh, much like the previous boss fight, you dodge some things until the boss becomes vulnerable, and then you throw TNT at his face. That's, That's... the entire boss fight. That seems really boring. It is! And then each time that he does it, the, the pattern that he does to before he becomes vulnerable is longer than last time. That seems in line with all of the Rare Rare boss fight design! Yeah. So you see there, he went and did the, the fireballs, and then he moved to another corner and did them a second time. And here, he's gonna do it at three different corners. Oh. That's that that is really changing it up there. So, uh, yeah. This, this game, I have fun playing this game. I do. Okay. Because I can have fun playing bad games. We've acknowledged this before. I've said before, I will not defend this game at all. It is a bad game. It has a lot of problems. It is badly designed. Yeah, it, it appears to be at that intersection of badly designed and badly manufactured. Like, if it was just badly designed, but it was perfectly playable... Yeah... That would be one thing. If it was perfectly playable, or if it was really bad to play, but it was very well designed, that would be one thing. This is at the intersection of both. Yeah, and I, again, I, I think that it was just like... I know for a fact that, like, they, they've stated in, like, interviews before that the impetus of this game, the whole idea behind it was Banjo Kazooie was really popular, really good, let's do that, but more. Well, they certainly did more. 